Hello everyone! Today we're going to be doing an artwork based on Gustav Klimt's artwork, The Woman in Gold. Now I'm going to pop the picture up for you to have a look at and you will see it is just beautiful. It's got a gorgeous woman and she is wearing the most amazing clothes, all gold down her body, covered in patterns and in behind her you have lots of beautiful patterned panels as well. So that is the artwork that we're going to be looking at. What's really interesting about this artwork is that it has got a lot of different patterns. So we're going to have fun either drawing your own patterns and painting or colouring them, or you can use coloured paper and things that you have at home. So wrapping paper or scrapbooking paper, or origami paper with patterns on it. So you can either do it as a mixed media artwork where you're going to be using these kinds of things and then gluing and sticking them on as well as a little bit of colouring or you can do it as a fully painted or coloured artwork. So to start off with what we're going to do is just draw our lady onto our page and then we can get ready to cut her out. So she is quite a tall woman. She's going to fill up most of your page. So we're going to draw her head up the top here. And we're going to put a little bit of hair on. Now she's got this kind of crazy swoopy hairstyle. So make sure you give her a really cool looking hairstyle, big swoopy hair. She's got a lovely long neck, so underneath the chin we're going to do two lines straight down and then she's got two shoulders, so we come out from the neck either side like that. Now in the painting she has got her hands in front of her, so she's sort of going like this and you can't see, because her arms are coming like this, you can see that you can't see my whole arm. You can mostly just see this part of my arm, so you don't really see all of this. So when we draw it, we don't have to do the whole arm, because it's not like you can really see it. It's sort of hidden, she's got her arms kind of like this. So I'm going to put two arms on folded in front of her chest, so down from her shoulders, going to do a line down here and this is the forearm scooping around and then this is her hand so just put her hand on like that and on the other side we're going to do the same we've got a little bit of arm there elbow and then her hand so we want to have two arms in front of her chest here and then underneath here, we're going to do her body, and we're going to do it like a wiggly body. So just wiggle all the way down to the bottom of the page, and another wiggle down like that. And then on either side, she's almost got this dress like a cape flowing out from her sides here. So we're going to go from underneath her elbow, and we're just going to swoosh that out, nice big curve. And then the other side, we're going to come out this side underneath here and then out to the side. So this is our basic shape for our lady. Then you can put a face on there and you can put her clothes on as well. We can just, that is the basic outline. So we're just going to cut that out. Now we might want to put some clothes on here, might be, so we're going to put a dress on, the two straps coming down her shoulders, then we're going to get the top of her dress here, a little panel there, and we can put her face on. So now we're going to start thinking about some of these patterns that we can put in her clothes. So she's got three parts of her clothes, she's got her main dress and then she's got the two sides of her cape. So have a little think about what is a pattern. A pattern is of having a repeated shape that you see over and over again in the same area. 
So we see patterns all the time out in nature and around us. So we have patterns in our clothes, like this. We have patterns that we can see like a honeycomb or cobblestones have got a pattern in them. Bricks on a house. So you see a repeated shape and that creates a pattern. So you might have a pattern in your carpet or a pattern on your wallpaper. So it's looking around you and seeing what patterns that you can see. And we can choose some basic shapes that we can repeat to create our own patterns. Now I'm just going to show you a few simple shapes that Gustav Klimt used in his artwork to create patterns. So some of the shapes that he used quite often were swirls and spirals. So swirls and spirals were quite common in his artworks. So if you can incorporate some swirls and spirals into your patterns, that would be really cool. The other pattern that he used was this eye shape. So it's an eyeball shape. And sometimes it had the circle and the dot in the middle. And sometimes it just had the dot in the middle like that. So you can repeat this shape or these shapes within your design as well. What other shapes can we repeat? Sometimes he would use a square and he would repeat the square shape and inside the square he might put another shape so there might be a triangle inside there or there might be a circle or a dot inside there. The other shape that he would use a lot is a circle. So you can just do lots of dots as a repeating pattern. Or you can put the circle inside a square. The other shape that was quite common that he used was the triangle. So you can put the triangle inside a square or you can just have the triangle as is and just repeat the triangle. So think about those shapes that we know, triangles, squares, ovals, hexagons, oblongs, and you can just use those and repeat those shapes within certain areas. So we could pick the spiral shape and decide to put that maybe in one area of our lady's dress or we could choose to put the eyeball shape in one area. So we might choose the eyeball shape and we're going to repeat that inside our lady's dress to create a pattern. So inside the lady's dress, we're going to draw some of these eyeball shapes and repeat that all the way down until we fill that up. We can also fill in some of these gaps with another shape. So you can combine maybe two shapes into one area. So we can do triangles as well as the eyeball. So I've picked two shapes and I'm just going to repeat those through there. Then maybe on this side, I might decide to use from our selection, maybe I'll use one of the square shapes. So I might use the square and then put some of these designs into it. So we might do lots of squares and then some of my squares might have a circle in them and some of them might have a triangle. So that's that side's got its own pattern in it. And then over here I might do a different pattern. I might use the triangle again or I could use the spiral we haven't used the spiral so maybe we'll use the spiral so I might fill in this side with lots of spirals and fill that all in with spirals then we can put a little pattern up here in her dress we might just use the triangle shape some triangles in there. Maybe we'll use some spots until we have filled up our whole design with beautiful patterns. So once we have drawn in all of our patterns and designs, we can go ahead and either paint or color that in. 
So when you do decide to start painting, it's a good idea when you're trying to create patterns to use repeated colours. Rather than using loads of different colours all over the place, try to stick to a couple of colours in each section of patterns. And I'm thinking about what two or three colours I'm going to use in here. So the other colour I would like to use is a blue, but you can use whatever colours you like. If you want to keep it similar to what the artist's work looked like, you might want to use lots of golds, red, blue, gold, black and white, but mostly gold. Some of you may not have a gold felt or a gold pen, so you can go with orange or yellow or something similar. So I do have some gold, so I'm going to give her a gold dress. And we'll do some nice skin colour for her. So we're going to put her aside to dry and we're going to start working on the background next. So for the background, we're going to just paint the background one or colour it, one colour. If you do not have paints, you can just use coloured paper and you can just put colour paper all on the back or you could colour it in with crayon or you could cover it in a wrapping paper. The other option is tin foil would look really cool. So just put tin foil in the background. So we just need something plain in the background. Fill the background all in. So you can see I've got a few different bits of wrapping paper in different patterns and even a plastic bag. So there's lots of different patterns and things in here. So we want to create a circle shape to put in behind her head. So think about what would look really cool. I really like this pattern here. So we're going to cut a circle out like that. And we're going to glue that in behind her head, almost like a halo. That's the only one we need to glue directly onto our lady. The rest of them we can just glue onto our background. So that one we definitely need it in behind her head. The other ones are just going to be poking out from behind her body. So we can see where she's going to go on the page. So we might just mark a little bit of an outline so we can see that she's going to be here. So we know, sort of know where we need to put our patterned paper and then we can just start cutting some cool shapes out of our paper, out of our patterns to put in behind, poke, that'll poke out from behind her body. So because we've done the outline of the lady we know where she's going to go or you can just keep her on there and then we can just play around with tucking the paper in behind so we put it that in behind there, and that can go in behind there somewhere. I've got this pink spotty paper, and it can poke out there, give it a piece of that. Let's use a bit more of this lovely colourful one here. There we go, that's looking pretty cool, isn't it? So we can just glue these in behind. And once we've glued those patterns in behind, we can glue our gorgeous lady onto the top. And there we go, there's our beautiful woman in gold using the mixed media technique. So using colored paper, and a bit of paint as well so that is the option if you want to do that if you would like to do the full painted option then we have another video for that one as well so 
hope you have enjoyed this artwork and I can't wait to see your beautiful final products. Hope you have fun learning all about patterns and how you can use them in your artwork and making a beautiful woman in gold. I'll see you next time. Bye!